Current dives can be intense and stressful. It's where your judgment making capabilities will be put to the test. You will experience varying degrees of current in many of the world's best dive sites. And so having a certain level of comfort will help prove beneficial when you go to these dive sites. It is a core facet of diving and being experienced in current will make you an exceptional diver. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Don, and if you enjoy travel and adventure, you come to the right channel, where I share tips and experiences to help make sure your next trip is a wonder to behold. Many of the best dive sites with the biggest pelagic animals such as whales, mantas, and sharks will often have current. Diving in current is where the beginner diver becomes more of the intermediate and advanced diver. It's because to do current diving safely, you need a lot more skills and you need a lot of confidence in your skills to be able to do safely. And we're not talking about drift diving here. Drift diving is more of where you have a planned entry and will drift to a planned exit and usually a boat driver will know where to pick you up. It's more of a relaxing and planned venture where you're going to just go with the flow. The current's gonna push you and you don't have to fight it. Different levels of current. Current is not uncommon and there's many different levels of current. Strong current be, can be described as a force that you're swimming against and you can no longer make progress against that force. That is a, such a strong current that it's gonna push you backwards. And so you have to use certain skills and techniques to manage that. Medium current might be something that you can manage and still swim against, although you'll exhaust yourself over some time. And in negligible or no current is basically usually in beginner areas that are protected and sheltered by coral reef or area bay areas that are very calm and maybe some sway or surge uh, that's a little bit different, but basically you're able to manage and, and move wherever you want without needing to fight the current. Currents can be best described as underwater streams or rivers that can move horizontally or vertically and can even, in the most intense situations, cause vortexes in the water. And those vortexes can even be called washer machines. Before you begin your dive, there are obviously certain areas are certainly known to have more intense currents than other areas. And you usually will know about this if you pay attention in your dive briefing or where you're going. And so you can expect certain currents and even see the current before you enter the water. Sometimes you will have surface level current or current that is even more at more depth. So sometimes it's as easy as going up or down to get out of current. And you can also move horizontally to get out of current as well. Sometimes, you don't have to move that much at all. Imagine just moving a half meter or more can get you out of current. The hard part is taking notice of how you're fighting the current and looking around to see where the current is in a timely manner before it sweeps you away. The important thing is when you are doing a current dive, you will have to change the fundamental dynamic of how you're diving to be able to manage the current dive successfully. Before you enter the water, you can look down from the top and look for soft coral or kelp that is moving around and even other fish that are swimming against the current or with the current and see the behaviors of everything around and you can get an idea of how intense the current is. Erratic movement, hard swimming from the fish is usually a sign that there's a hard current right now, a strong current. The moon affects the tides of Earth as it rotates around the planet and has a gravitational pull towards it and the water moves in its direction and this creates a predictable tide schedule in most regions around the planet. Understanding the tide schedule is important so you don't end up diving when the pool is at full blast and you just get blown away from your dive site. As the moon rotates around the planet it will create a pool that's closest to the moon and in a pool on the other side of the planet. And so this creates two high tides and two low tides as it rotates one full moon cycle or lunar cycle around the earth. Between a high tide and the low tide is when the movement and motion of the current starts stabilizing and going into a neutral tide, which is called a slack tide. And this is one of the most optimal times to dive because 
even in high current areas, you'll get low to no current diving. Still, even knowing the tide tables and some parts of the world, tides are just unpredictable. And so you have to use your own judgment before entering the water. Poke your head in from the boat and observe the water, the movement, the kelp, the fish, and the coral and how it's moving and really make sure you're getting into something that you're comfortable with. Current can change at certain depths. Sometimes it's very strong at the surface, sometimes it's strong all the way through. But when you observe this, if you have an anchor line available, taking it down to the dive site is wise. Other times, your dive team might decide to do a negative dive and that's where you get underneath the surface maybe the surface current really fast, or maybe you just want to get down to the bottom of the dive set or there's hazards towards the top of the surface. A negative dive is a tool to get to the bottom as fast as you can. Normally, you have air in your BCD before entering the water. A negative dive is where you intentionally empty the air out of your BCD. It's important to suck out all of the air in your BCD through the hose. Suck it out and make sure it's fully empty. Otherwise, you'll bob at the surface and waste precious time trying to do a negative dive. And then once you enter the water, you go down face first and go straight to the bottom, equalizing as fast as you can and wasting very little time getting to the bottom. Once on the bottom, you must read the current. Try to get it to a current-free area and anchor yourself by grabbing sand or a rock and just observe for a moment and take it in. We want to never touch coral, so if there is too much coral that you can't anchor yourself without touching coral, try to look around for big balmy corals that you might be able to hover behind without touching anything and seek shelter from the current while you observe around and figure out what the current situation at the bottom is. Take some time to take it all in, assess the situation, make sure your dive buddy's there and the rest of the team is around you. Most importantly, Swimming against the current will drain you of energy and air before you know it. Also, swimming against the current and working hard as a scuba diver will build up carbon dioxide in your body over time that will cause a carbon dioxide poisoning, which will make you feel miserable and give you the most worst headache you've ever had. It's like a hangover times 10. It's not something you want to experience. Instead, you want to be as lazy as possible. So find those shelter protected areas, anchor yourself or hop behind big corals and then take them about a, a moment to look around. Oh, there's another big coral over there. Then you go swim directly behind the other coral and then you can continue to rest there as you need and look around for the next place you're gonna hop to. The key is to move slowly and deliberately with you, your dive buddy and the team and make sure that you're doing the hopping and identifying where you're going and be very deliberate with your movements and your rest periods. Alternatively, before your team enters the water, you could decide that this current is too strong for our liking and you can turn it into a drift dive. Of course, you have to do this before you enter the water and communicate effectively across the team and also with the boat driver of where you're going to be going and so that they know where to look for you down the current and important make sure you decide this before you enter the water like it's not something you decide while you're in the water the biggest risk of being blown away by the current away from your dive buddy your team and the dive site is being lost at sea or much further away from where you want to be when a team loses a diver or the diver loses their team both sides of the party to try and find each other from the last position they saw each other. Spend no more than a few minutes trying to find each other. If it's clear you no longer see that dive site and you've been blown away, you should immediately board the dive. Ideally, you have a 30 meter plus long line for your SMB and deploy that thing immediately as soon as you start to abort your dive. This will go to the surface like a little balloon and notify the boats at the surface of where your position is. So even if you're being blown away by the current and if it's very fast, a boat driver um, that will be observing will see the SMB moving and where it's going and they'll be able to track that even as you're moving. It might be stressful, but it's important to take your time ascending to the surface. Even if the current's blowing you away from the dive site, 
the SMBs there to notify the boats on the surface so you can take your time. You don't, you cannot risk decompression sickness. So take your time and ascend normally, do your safety stop and then go to the surface. In most circumstances, being lost or blown away from a dive site is not a big deal. At best, you can abort your dive early and dive again later. Failing to do things well and practicing and making sure you abide by the things I mentioned in this video could mean you get lost and a lost diver in the ocean is very hard to find. And that's all for this video. If you liked it, please make sure to smash that like button and make sure it gets recommended to other people. And if you have your own experiences in current or are going to be doing some current dive, diving in the future, please make sure you give a comment below. Until next time.